My research focuses on issues of nuclear weapons proliferation, uh, the control of nuclear weapons and the prospects of nuclear disarmament uh, in general. Specifically, my current research focus is looking at the UK government's decision to begin the process of replacing its current Trident nuclear weapon system. This has been a controversial decision that was set out by the current Labour government in a white paper at the end of 2006. Parliament authorised in a vote in March 2007 to begin the process, this long process of replacing the current Trident system that's probably going to take another 15 or so years. It's controversial, it's expensive, uh, there are lots of questions about whether nuclear weapons remain relevant to British security and whether it's something in these, in these times of, of economic downturn. It's big questions of, about whether it's something the government should be spending upwards of 20 billion just to buy the things, let alone keep them running. Well, the, the theory of nuclear deterrence essentially argues that if another country in the world has nuclear weapons and might conceivably threaten this country with a nuclear attack, and this was judged to be the situation during the Cold War when we faced the Warsaw Pact and the Soviet Union, the theory of nuclear deterrence says if I've got nuclear weapons myself and they are configured in such a way that I can retaliate against you if you use your nuclear weapons against me, then that will deter you from thinking about or actually attacking me in the first place. Now that, that theory may have held some water during the Cold War, but the prospects of Britain in particular facing a Cold War style long-term threat of nuclear devastation from another country just doesn't hold water anymore. The other issue with the theory of nuclear deterrence is that it gives carte blanche for any state that uh, feels threatened in the international environment in which it finds itself to acquire nuclear weapons. If it's okay for Britain or a country like France that really faces no major long-term strategic threats to its security, such as that faced by the Soviet Union during the Cold War, if it's okay for us to have nuclear weapons and continue to upgrade, replace and so on, then why is it not okay for a country, for example, like North Korea or Iran, to use that same logic to justify acquiring its own nuclear weapons? Particularly for a country like Iran, whose leadership uh, has many question marks about it, but the country does find itself surrounded by other nuclear powers, for example, Pakistan and Israel and the US Navy in the Gulf, which is also nuclear armed. Nuclear weapons have, since the, the dawn of the nuclear age, uh, conferred, uh, press, or have been seen to confer prestige on those that have acquired them. It's no coincidence, you might argue, that the five permanent members of the UN or Security Council are the five original nuclear weapon states, Russia, the United States, China, Great Britain and France. Certainly in the UK and France, as well as other countries, nuclear weapons are wrapped up in this idea of having a seat at the top table of international diplomacy. So, for example, the logic follows if the UK decided to give up its nuclear weapons, perhaps we wouldn't have as much diplomatic clout in the world as we judge ourselves to have today. So this is one of the other issues affecting nuclear weapons dynamics beyond actual security or military strategic security considerations. At the moment the, the uh, Trident replacement program involves the initial phases of designing a new replacement uh, ballistic missile submarine. The UK currently has four Vanguard class huge ballistic missile submarines based up in Scotland that carry the Trident nuclear missiles. Now, the Trident replacement debate came about because these submarines are reaching the end of their service lives. They're going to be retired in the early 2020s. And these things take about 17 years, according to the government, to design, build, test and deploy. Hence why the process is underway now. So the process for designing the new successor submarines uh, is currently underway. My research is challenging a particular 
uh, assertion put forward by the government that there's really nothing more it can do in terms of British nuclear weapons policy apart from a like-for-like -like replacement of the current Trident nuclear weapons system, which will allow Britain to remain a nuclear, uh, a nuclear weapon state well into the second half of this century. There's that option on the one hand, and unilateral nuclear disarmament on the other, which is currently politically unacceptable to the Labour government and the Conservative Party, certainly for now. The government argues that there are only those two options and nothing in between. My current research is focused on challenging that assertion, looking at options in between uh, those two particular poles and exploring how the British government can take further steps to reduce both the size and the operational readiness of the current Trident system. We mustn't forget that the UK's current policy is to always have one ballistic missile submarine on operational duty at sea, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, ready to fire its full payload of 48 nuclear warheads within days or within even hours of a decision to do so. And each of those 48 warheads is approximately eight times more destructive than that which destroyed Hiroshima at the end of World War II in 1945.